Hey, it's me, Andy B, the Dizzy Busy PT, speaking out for all those who are just way too busy to be dizzy so that we can take your vertigo to Vertigon. Today, we are going to be talking about something I'm extremely passionate about. The most important test that you can do to help figure out why you have vertigo in the first place. Before we get there, I want to do a quick review of what we talked about last week. We discussed what does vertigo really mean? We know that sometimes we go get a diagnosis that, hey, you have vertigo, but then we discuss the fact that, well, that really isn't telling us why you have vertigo. It's telling us that you feel a spinning sensation, that we're acknowledging that you're spinning, but we're not really telling you why you're spinning. So we learned that the cause of vertigo can come from peripheral problems, which is the inner ear, and central problems, which is the brainstem and the cerebellum. And we discussed some possible common causes such as benign paroxysmal positional vertigo or vestibular migraines, or of course there can be the more scary things like a stroke or a TIA, brain tumors, those kinds of things. You can also have a virus to your inner ear which can cause different kinds of spinning sensations. But let's get to the point of today. Now, First off, I am a dizzy, busy physical therapist. What does that mean? Well, I see a lot of people who are dizzy all day long. So I've learned a lot over the last 25 years treating dizziness. And that's why I'm making this video because I wish that people knew what I am about to tell you. Why does vertigo happen? And which test is the best test that a person can have done? Before we get there, I wanna explain how the inner ears work because that will make sense why I'm going to teach you this simple test that can be done to give us a ton of information. What you see me holding here is an amazing model of the inner ear. The inner ear is teeny tiny. You can put four of them on the end of your thumbnail. Can you believe that? Four of these you could put on the end of your thumbnail. And most of us know that the inner ear helps us have balance, right? It helps us stay upright. Most of us know that the inner ear helps us hear. Now that's not this part, that's the cochlea looking, the snail looking structure. Very few of us know, and here's the key, this is what amazes me, even when I still talk about it 25 years later, the inner ear helps you, ready? Drum roll please. It helps you see clearly when you move your head. Each canal moves the eye in its own plane of motion without you having to think about it. It's unconscious. We don't have to think about it. You move your head, you go like this, you go like that, you go forward, you go back. Your inner ears are reflexively moving your eyes in the opposite direction of your head. That's why when the inner ear breaks, when something goes wrong with the inner ear, it causes the eyeballs to spin too much or they don't move enough. We all, many of us have heard of the calcium crystal problem, right? Where all these little calcium crystals get loose in different canals. And depending upon which canal the problem is in will determine which way the eyeballs spin. Do you know where I'm going with this? Hopefully you can get an idea of where I might be going. If someone has vertigo, if they go to the emergency department, if they go see their doctor, and they're spinning like a top. You know what the best thing that they could do just for 30 seconds to help us understand why they are spinning? I'm gonna give you a hint. You get up close and you look right in the eyes and you look straight ahead for about 10 seconds and you look a little bit to the right for about 10 seconds and you look a little bit to the left for about 10 seconds. You know what that does? It helps us see if the person has what's called nystagmus, an involuntary eye movement. When people have nystagmus, when it's from something new, an inner ear problem or a brainstem or a cerebellar problem, the eyeballs will spin fast one way and slow the other. And we have learned how to name this nystagmus so that we can know where the problem is coming from, whether it's coming from the inner ears, whether it's coming from the brainstem or cerebellum. So there are a few different kinds of vertigo that happens. There are these spontaneous spells 
where the person is just doing nothing and then they suddenly start feeling spinning and maybe it lasts minutes, maybe it lasts hours, but it'll often go away. And the person goes to the doctor to find out what's wrong, why are they spinning? The doctor checks them out, they have fancy MRIs, CT scans, they may have a special test called a VNG, but they're not symptomatic when they have these spells and nobody can figure out what's wrong. If, they, if the individual would just take their phone or someone would take a video, a 30 second video during the attack, we could learn so much about why the person is spinning in the first place. Think about this. If someone might have a heart problem, we think maybe they have atrial fibrillation, maybe they have some type of dysrhythmia, arrhythmia of the heart, what do we do? We give the person a home EKG monitor, they stick it to their chest, and every time they have an event, they push a button so that we can get a picture or an idea of what the heart is doing when the person is symptomatic. The vestibular system is the same. We need to get a video of the eyes when the person is symptomatic. Okay, so we talked about spontaneous episodic vestibular syndrome when attacks just come on for no reason. The best thing that those individuals can do at that moment is get a quick video of their eyes. Triggered episodic vestibular syndrome. Anybody ever done the Epley maneuver? Anybody ever have it fail and wonder why? If you can take a video of the eyes when you lay down, we can see what direction the eyes are spinning. And if we can see what direction the eyes are spinning, each canal moves the eyes in its own plane of motion. Maybe the calcium crystals are loose in a different canal. The Epley treats the posterior canal. We've got different maneuvers for different canals. So if we can get a video of the eyes during those attacks, we can learn an awful lot about why a person is spinning and then that helps people get help. You know, vertigo is terrifying. You're spinning like a top and sometimes it goes away and the person will say, I'm still spinning. And they'll come in and they'll say, I'm having these crazy attacks. They're happening all the time. And I'll say, I want a video of your eyes. Next time you have an attack, take a video, email it to me. And then I can see what's going on. And boy, does that offer help. But you know something else? Another benefit of doing this, what we learn is that vertigo can be so bad that people will say they feel like they could spin, but they're not. It's like, a, it's like an uh-oh feeling, I'm spinning, but they're not really spinning. So we call it a pre-spin. The video helps us get on the same page as our patients and say, okay, I don't see your eyes spinning right now. Are you sure you were spinning? Or is it more of a feeling like you could spin? And you know what's interesting? It helps people understand, you know what, you're right. I wasn't spinning as hard as I usually do. It was more of a feeling like I could. Well, that leads to treatment options. That's a good sign. That means you're starting to get better. A feeling like it could is not a sign that it will. And we start to work through that and what that means. So here's the point, guys. For today, what I really want you to hear that if someone has vertigo, okay, they're spinning hard, one of the best tests is simple, it's easy, but it gives us so much good information. If you could just take that video camera out, take a 30 second video, look straight in those eyes, do a, a gaze straight ahead for 10 seconds, a gaze to the right for 10 seconds, a gaze to the left for 10 seconds, and give that video to an educated vestibular healthcare provider who can see the nystagmus and know what's happening during your vertigo attack. That can help you get diagnosed, which can then help you get the right treatment you need to take your vertigo to vertigon. <laughs> so hey, enough of the crazy puns, but I hope you understand the power of seeing what is going on with the eyes. I like to say when it comes to vertigo, the big three is key. And so for next week, we're going to talk about the other two key points of how to get help with vertigo. The first one that I want you to hear is nystagmus. Nystagmus is one of the keys to getting help with vertigo. Take that video of your eyes. I look forward to talking more about this next week. And uh, if you like this video, I would ask that you would subscribe. What we're trying to do here is build a community 
of people who are battling dizziness and we want to start sharing ideas. What is working for you? If we get enough people who are interested, I'd be happy to go live and answer questions along the way, but let's build a community and share some of the latest and greatest things that we're learning to overcome dizziness together as a community. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you've done some video of your eyes, put them in the comments. How did that help you get answers? Are you getting answers? Or are people still confused about what's going on? So stay tuned, join us again next week as we work on helping you learn more about treating dizziness and balance disorders, where we can take you uh, from being dizzy to not being as dizzy anymore. We wanna help you go and spin no more.